Feast TV is brought to you with support from Missouri Wines, Whole Foods Market, La Col Culinaire, The Raphael Hotel, and New Season Spa and Salon. If you can't tell by looking behind me, this is the barbecue episode. I'm Kat Neville, and this is Feast TV. begin this episode in the heart of barbecue country here in Kansas City and our first stop is a chat with Danny Edwards here at Danny Edwards Boulevard Barbecue. So tell me the history of your family and barbecue starting with your dad. My dad started barbecuing in Texas sometime in the 30s, did barbecue there for six years or so, and then he came to Kansas City in 1938 and opened up his first place at 1018 Baltimore. I actually worked in that place in 1980. That's where I started. So what was it like for you growing up in barbecue? I went out and hung out with my dad. You know, my mom wanted to kick us out of the house so she could clean and stuff. She says, you know, take Dan with you, you know? So he gave me a job. I always had a little money in my pocket. I was washing dishes or buzzing tables. He kept me busy and it kept me out of trouble too. So if someone's never been here before, what should they get? The beef sandwich is good. And uh, the Big D sandwich is very uh, popular as well. We sell more beef than we sell anything. I'd be happiest if you ate that first and then tried everything else. I mean, you really do have this long view, starting with your dad and kind of moving up to where you are today. So where do you see barbecue going next? Well, it has to get better and better and better because so many uh, amateurs are doing it. So many more people are buying a great smoker for their backyard and it didn't used to be that way at all. Now everyone's interested in it. Absolutely. And the folks who are getting into barbecue, they're learning from the master, Mike Mills. So let's head to 17th Street right now. All of these big names from all over the country are, I mean, you're in a room that's totally silent. I mean, Mike Mills is a, a legend, and to be among his presence, you just, you feel something special. He has this wealth of knowledge, like people getting excited about listening to like a guy speak. It's not just regionally, we know him in Worcester, Ohio, as someone who really spreads the gospel of good, good quality barbecue. How's my hair? <laughs> I'm kidding. You can only do so much here, fellas. Doing a roll sign, Pete? My name's Mike Mills, and we're here at 17th Street Barbecue in Murfreesboro, Illinois. What we've got going on here is a whole hog extravaganza. We have five different hogs being cooked five different ways from five different pit masters from around the country. Some of the finest hog cookers in the world, and they're all right here in Murfreesboro. The amazing sharing of information that goes on in this thing is beautiful. What they're finding here, there are no secrets. I've seen restaurant owners, I have seen food truck operators, I've seen people that just really enjoy food. And there's really something here that appeals to all walks of life. It is a community of barbecue elite that are willing to share all their information. Each person is sharing everything they know and there's no secret. It's a beautiful thing. It's a utopian barbecue society. You know, we have four hogs out here right now. They saw these hogs prepped. Some of them stayed during the night because there had been somebody here cooking all night long. And be able to take that off and be able to see if you do it this way, this step, this spice, Here's what it is. 
Now, right now, there's 38, I think it's 38 people. They're here from Alaska, they're here from Canada, Iowa, they're all parts of the country. Why do you do this and tell what your secrets are? My question is, why not? There's room for all of us in this world. I just don't want you sitting up across the street. At least go around the corner. <laughs> I'm kidding. Well, my number one favorite part would definitely be just eating all the food. I mean, I, I've had meat sweat since I got here. Trying the most amazing food that I've ever had. Favorite part of this is, I think, just being uh, among such magical people and having those conversations behind the scenes and those are the, the conversations that you have the, the long time takeaways with that really you can't get elsewhere. We want to be the best barbecue in our region preferably so I started to look into it and I was like yeah I mean I think there's going to be a lot of great speakers here and there's a lot that we can learn. The common denominator is when we all sit down at the table and we taste this food and you just see the eyes and the smiles light up. I mean you can just see it in each of their eyes when they're when they're talking to these people, talking to other people that are in their business, how they love it. They love it. They love everything about what they do, their craft, their artists and they're they're I don't know, it's just great. I feel very proud of that. I've been able to be a three-time world grand champion and a four-time world champion. But the main thing that out of all of it is I get to do what I like. I get to do what I enjoy. I get to meet a lot of nice people. It's just been a passion of mine. It's, I like people. I enjoy cooking. I enjoy teaching other people how to barbecue or what I think barbecue is all about. And this is just an example of what can be done and what brings Murfreesboro and Southern Illinois into the barbecue mecca. Barbecue's family! Great. <laughs>standing here with the legendary, and I do mean legendary, Mike Emerson of Pappy's in St. Louis. And there are so many different elements that go into making great barbecue, but at its essence, barbecue is an incredibly simple food. So if any of the different pieces along the way aren't up to par, everything kind of falls apart. So how do you put all those elements together? Well, you know, it's we refer to it often as it's it's, it's almost like um, artistry or a, or a band. You know, you, you, if you're going to paint a pretty picture, you start with a good canvas. You start with the best oils, and same way with a band, you're going to start with a, a great rhythm section. You're going to have a great lead guitar player and somebody that can sing. And we kind of set it up the same way. That and so many people they want to focus on the rub. They want to focus on the way that you sauce your meats and all of that. But if it's not smoked properly what comes out, it doesn't matter. You can't dress up something that's not cooked No, no. Correctly. When you get to that point, you know, it's, it's, it's fine to write the song, but then you have to play it, and these things play it. That's what they do. How does a smoker work? Well, this one here is a gas-fired wood burner. David Knight, our buddy down there in Cape Girardeau, uh, he's developed quite a piece of equipment here. And <laughs> what we, that's gorgeous. What we have here, Today we're cooking the uh, baby back ribs, and uh, what we like about these things is as they rotate, the, the drippings from the, uh, the rack above will fall down on the rack below. What that does is it, it just keeps that meat moist as it's, as it's cooking. It's an amazing cooker. Uh, so far it's working out pretty uh, well. Yeah, I'd say it's working out beautifully. So how many smokers do you have here? You have a number, this isn't the only one. Seven smokers on, on this store here. And, uh, you have seven? Seven smoking, yeah. How much meat do you go through in a day? Uh, on a good day, we can cook five to 6,000 pounds of barbecue. Mm -hmm. We open the doors when it's ready, which is usually between 10, 30, and 11 in the morning. And there are lines out the and, door. Yeah, the, the early bird gets the barbecue, so they start lining up pretty quick. And then when you're sold out, you're done. Yes, we, we sell out every day. That's uh, Barbecue has to be fresh. And the only way you can cook fresh barbecue every day is to sell out every day. Well, I want to see how these amazing smokers are made. So let's head to Cape Girardeau right now. Barbecue 
There's nothing more American, and over the past 10 years or so, it has absolutely exploded. And one of the big names tied to the incredible quality that you're finding in the barbecue circuit these days is Old Hickory Pit. And I'm standing here with the founder of the company. Give me just that little background of how you realized that these pits needed to be invented, essentially. Well, it goes back quite a ways. 1974, uh, I opened a restaurant, a barbecue restaurant. Of course, to do barbecue, you have to have a pit. And I built a big brick pit that went up three stories high. And that and it was controlled with a manual damping, a little chain kind of thing that goes up and down. Makes it hot, makes it cool off. Which worked perfectly, if the pit cook remembered to do it. <laughs> the third time the fire trucks came, we decided there should be a better way. And lo and behold, uh, over a period of years, we developed a way that uh, is now throughout the uh, entire world. How is what you design different? Ours is strictly slow cooking. We don't do grilling. So the mantra is low and slow in cooking temperature. The wonderful, beautiful thing about the barbecue industry is that it attracts people from all different walks of life. Barbecue brings people together because it is low and slow. It takes a lot of yeah. time. You can kind of fiddle with it over a number of hours, drink a couple beers, just foster the friendships that form around it. Absolutely. So where can people go and experience the old Hickory Pit? Well, fortunately, we have customers all over the world, but in Missouri, Illinois, this general area, my good friend, Mike Mills, has a world-famous restaurant, 17th Street, right across the Mississippi River in Murfreesboro. He's incredible. He is absolutely, quote, the legend. Yes. And also Mike Emerson there at Pappy's and, of course, at Bogart's. Mm -hmm. The Shave Duck, Salt and Smoke, and other cities in Missouri, Kansas City, for example, Arthur Bryant's is probably one of the most well-recognized barbecue restaurants in the world. Absolutely. And the best kept secret is they've been cooking on old hickory pits in the back for 35 years, but don't tell anyone. Okay, I won't tell okay. anybody. <laughs>so what do you do day to day? Basically quality control makes sure everything works right and I'm calibrating and making sure the cooking chamber on the inside is actually doing what the thermometer is telling you it's doing and just making it as efficient as possible. I test them every one for at least six hours. Really? Yes. So this is designed where there is a burner, but then also there is the box where you can put in the wood so that the actual, so it's not just heat that is yeah. being applied, but there's also smoke that's going to be applied. So has the design changed at all in the nine years that you've been here? Or are they the same? Quite a bit, yes. Whenever I first started, the CTO was a rotisserie. It's stationary rack now. The rotisserie was just so all your, your product got into the hot spot up top, but now we've got convection in there and you're hot is top and bottom. I mean, it's level throughout the whole pit, so we don't need a rotisserie, which means we have more cooking space. So you actually are doing a lot of cooking yourself, though. I mean, you just cook, you said, just right outside. And I cook on it daily. I mean... Quality daily. control, right? Yeah. Yeah, we got to <laughs> test it, make sure it works right. Yeah, we've put uh, pizza, biscuits. I've smoked, you know, all kinds of wild game. And then, you know, the staples, pulled pork, ribs, chicken, and... I haven't found anything yet that I didn't like. <laughs> <laughs> this is essentially not the gold standard. This is the stainless steel standard of the barbecue world. I mean, you've got to be so proud to be a part of this. Oh, I brag about these things all the time. Even when I'm not here, I tell people, oh, you know, we're number one. I send smokers to Australia. Oh, we sent some to the UK, Israel, places like that. I mean, they're all over the world. It's not just the United States. It's everywhere. And they're made by hand here in, in Cape, Cape Girardeau. Girardeau is when you go having machines put everything together, you lose personal touch. And if somebody has a problem and they call us, they're talking to somebody that knows, that works on them. Mm -hmm. You know, you call a car manufacturer, whether a machine put it together, they're gonna say, you know, let me look in the book. Half the time when someone calls, if they've got a question, they can ask for me and I can tell them exactly what they need to know because I put it together. This seems like a complicated machine. Not, not at all. Um, here's our natural gas line coming in okay. through the wall. All you do is screw it in, turn the gas on, plug it in, set your temp, flip your switch. 
It's on. That's it? It's on. Uh, you could do just the gas and add the wood for the flavor or use the gas to, to start your solid fuel and shut the gas off and let the solid fuel do it. Wow. Just make sure the flame's hitting the wood. And so how many of these are you testing every day? Two a day. So 10 a week are being tested and sent out to soon to be barbecue champions around the world. We hope so. <laughs> I mean, we take the top spots in most of those competitions. It is the cook, but they have our pit too. I'm here in Springfield at City Butcher and Barbecue. This is a, a really interesting concept because you have charcuterie mm -hmm. that's house made along with the barbecue and then you have this wonderful pie element as well. How did all of that come together? Uh, well, we started at the farmer's market of the Ozarks um, with a charcuterie stand. Uh, I had done training in Texas in Austin where I went to culinary school. I fell in love with Texas style barbecue. It just seemed like a natural fit uh, to kind of combine those two passions together. And so what is Texas style barbecue? Um, Texas style barbecue is more about what it isn't than what it is. It's very simple, salt and pepper on all of our meats. Uh, we smoke it over oak wood and um, try not to mess it up. That's, that's the name of the game. <laughs> In Texas style barbecue, sauce is very secondary. Um, I recommend eating the brisket without sauce, just white bread, pickles and onions. Very simple. We put the sauce on the table. If you want it, you can have it. So try it first without the sauce and if you have to add it, then it's acceptable. Sure. Yeah. Maybe. Dip it. Don't pour it over the top. <laughs> no judging, right? Yeah. Well, we absolutely will judge you. <laughs> so you started making charcuterie, and it mm -hmm. still is a part of what you're offering people. We stay kind of in the wet charcuterie range. Um, we make duck ham and duck pastrami. We make beef pastrami and corned beef. Uh, we make all of our sausages in-house. We grind them, stuff them, smoke them here. We cure our bacon in-house. And so we always have an array of, of things like that. What do you think sets your barbecue apart? What they're going to taste is the meat. Our barbecue, with just using salt and pepper, you really taste the meat itself. And that's what we want to do first, is let people taste the meat as opposed to some proprietary blend of herbs and spices that I've thrown together. It's, it's about salt, it's about fat, it's about that real beet flavor. And also, we serve it fresh every single day. So we never reheat barbecue. We cook it fresh every single day. Once it's gone, it's gone. If we don't sell it, then we scrap it and use it for other things. That's really the base of our entire business model is just doing it the right way. Um, people taste the difference. Going out for barbecue is an American tradition, but you can also make fantastic barbecue at home even if you don't have a smoker. I'm going to show you today how to make perfectly tender, fall apart pulled pork. As you know, barbecue is very regional, and so I'm going to show you how to make your own Midwest style tomato based barbecue sauce, a white Alabama barbecue sauce, which is delicious and very, very simple, and then also a tangy mustard based Carolina sauce. The first step is going to be to get the pulled pork in the oven, and I'm going to be pairing this with two different wines. Um, one is a Vignol from St. James Winery. It's a very fruity white, and then also a Norton from Noble Ice. So let's get started on this, and you're gonna be amazed at how easy it is. I have my oven preheated at 325, and this is just a pork shoulder roast. It is pasture raised, very high quality. So you can see here we have this really lovely fatty side and then this is where all the meat is. And this particular cut you have to cook low and slow so that all of the connective tissues that you can see here in the meat come apart. 
I have chosen to use this Code 3 Spices Rub. It is a Midwest-based company and a lot of their proceeds go to benefit first responders. So I thought it'd be great to use their rub. And I chose a smoky rub because we are not actually putting this into a smoker. And so to give that very characteristic smoky quality to the pulled pork, I picked a rub that includes smoked paprika. You really do want to press it in and make sure that it adheres because over the very long cooking time, three, four hours, all of the moisture from the meat, the fat, and all that kind of good stuff, it's gonna meld with the spices and just create this wonderful crust on the outside. Okay, I think we're looking pretty good here. Now I'm gonna put this into the pan fat side up, and the reason why is that I want that fat as it's cooking to melt into the meat. So I don't wanna put that down, I wanna make sure that it's at the top. I'm gonna add just a tiny bit of chicken broth to the pan just so that everything kind of stays nice and moist. And all I'm gonna do now is pop it in the oven and wait. It's been about three hours. I know this looks kind of like a brown meat lump, but I promise you that underneath this crust is succulent, gorgeous pork. And you can see that it pulls apart really, really well. And that's how you know that it's finished. Now I'm gonna let that sit while I make my three barbecue sauces and I'm gonna start off with the Midwest style tomato-y sauce. And that begins with one finely diced onion. So I have five, six garlic cloves going into the pot next. So I'm gonna let this kind of cook down and get nice and translucent. I don't wanna brown it. So I'm pulling this down to medium low. All right, the onions and garlic are nice and soft. They look great. And what I'm gonna add now is that Code 3 Spices mix that I put onto the pork. Because I use this on the pork, I want it to match the flavor. So now I'm gonna put in all of the rest of my wet ingredients and I'm gonna let it just simmer for about half an hour. First one, good old American ketchup. Just two cups worth. Stir that in. And then to add just a real rich depth of flavor, I'm gonna stir in some molasses, another really interesting ingredient. I added in just a cup of water just to thin everything out. You don't want it to be too thick because we're gonna be simmering this, so a lot of that moisture is gonna evaporate in the process. Next up, I'm gonna go ahead and stir in about a third of a cup of brown sugar. The reason why we're using the brown sugar is because it has that molasses flavor as opposed to just the straight sweetness of a standard white sugar. And vinegar, is a big part of the balance. So we're gonna put in about a third of a cup. Worcestershire sauce is next. Just about a tablespoon, not much. This is the kind of thing that can definitely overwhelm the flavor of anything that you use it in. I'm gonna add in just a little bit of salt. The other salty ingredient is soy sauce. But of course, soy adds so much more. So now I'm just gonna let this simmer away. And you want to let this cook for at least half an hour. You want all those flavors to combine. So while this is cooking, I'm going to get started on my Carolina barbecue sauce. So Carolina style sauces begin with mustard and just plain old yellow mustard will do. Got about three quarters of a cup and I'm going to match that amount with the apple cider vinegar. And you can tell already this is really, really tangy, which is great for very fatty meats like our pulled pork. I'm gonna add in a little bit of brown sugar to this as well. A couple of tablespoons. Now another ingredient that is an interesting addition is a couple of tablespoons of butter. You wanna have just a little bit of a fatty mouthfeel to this. Then we're also going to be, of course, putting in some salt and pepper, a little bit of Worcestershire sauce, and then some hot sauce. Because what is the South without some heat? Gotta have some heat in there. 
My cooked sauces are bubbling away on the stove, and so I'm gonna go ahead and make my Alabama white sauce. Now, this is incredibly simple. It's essentially mayonnaise, salt, pepper, a little bit of water, and I gotta tell you, when it's put onto a pulled pork sandwich, it's delicious. A little bit of salt, a little bit of pepper. I am gonna go ahead and add in just a tiny bit of prepared horseradish to give it some heat. And then you just wanna thin it out with some water. And these are simmering away on the stove, just about finished. So I think it's about time for me to go ahead and pull that pork. Move this onto my cutting board. There we go. I'm gonna go ahead and cut this into pieces. You can see how tender it is. And this is the whole idea, that it'll just fall apart. I'd say our bowl is sufficiently full, don't you think? So here's our Midwest-style tomato-based sauce. It smells wonderful. And then we have this really lovely mustard-based Carolina sauce. Oh my goodness, this is a really, really delicious one. I love it. So all we have to do is split these gorgeous buns right here and build a sandwich. I'm just gonna pile all this gorgeous tender pork right on top. All right, I'm gonna build the rest of these sandwiches. One, two, three. Pulled pork with three kinds of barbecue sauce, each one entirely distinct and entirely delicious. I am pulling out a Norton to pair with this, and I also have a Vignole. This Norton is from Noble Ice, which is a vineyard very close to Augusta, and our Vignole that we've chosen is from St. James Winery, which is in more of a southern part of Missouri. The Alabama white sauce is gonna go really well with the white wines, and this Midwest-style barbecue sauce is what is gonna go so nicely with the Norton. Honestly, the mustard sauce could go with either. It can go either way. So that wraps our barbecue episode. And whether you're dining out or cooking at home, it's a great way to celebrate an American culinary tradition. So cheers, and I'll see you next time. <laughs>